Hey guys, thanks for watching. I'm so excited to bring you this look and you know what I see a lot of women do? I see a lot of women afraid to try new things with makeup or to try a new look or maybe a new color and I'll be honest, I think it's because you haven't sold yourself on what you're wanting to do. So think of it like when you want to go eat at a Chinese restaurant and your friend really is feeling more like Italian. What do you do? You sell your friend on the Chinese place. You say, oh, think of the sweet and sour chicken or the cashew chicken. You can tell I like Chinese, okay? But that's what you do. Not only did you sell yourself on the idea, you sold your friend on the idea too. The same way with makeup or trying a new outfit or something you wouldn't normally do, sell yourself on the reasons why you're gonna love it. When I wanna try a new look, I kind of freak out at first and I'm like, ooh, can I pull that off? Then I tell myself, okay, trying something new gives you confidence, Josie. You can do this. Um, you're going to love this look. It's gonna look amazing on you. You're gonna walk a little taller. You're gonna feel better. It's a go. I've sold myself on it. Even though this look is a little bit intense and I'm, I love this look, especially around the holidays, don't be intimidated to try it. Sell yourself on it. Practice, 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 and I hope you love it as much as I do. Have a blessed day. Starting out, my face is already going to have my foundation on and contouring done, but no concealer yet under my eyes. I'm gonna be taking a paint, and a paint will keep your eyeshadow on, oh my goodness, until the Lord returns. A paint is amazing. Because this is a lighter color, I'm going to put it all the way up and all over my lid. Next, I'm going to take a light colored eyeshadow. This is a very light colored eyeshadow, white, obviously. And this is going to go into the four corners. So at the very top, under the brow, and then in the corners of my inner part of my eye. And this highlights the look. Um, you always want to be a little bit highlighted in those corners. Next, I'm taking a beautiful rose gold. This is a pigment. Um, and I'm going to be putting this on with my finger. Now, this is the lighter of the two darker colors I'll be using. Um, and I'm going to be putting some of the darker color over this, so you don't need to worry about um, when you put it on, making sure it looks perfect, because we're going to blend with the brush. As you can see, I do windshield wiper motions, and then I do little tiny circles with a loose bristled brush. And this blends it and give it a, gives it a nice, um, smooth look. And don't be afraid to keep blending. I always just blend, blend, blend until it's to my satisfaction. And then I dance it out, because why not? Next, I'm going to be taking the darkest color. This is like a deep cranberry. I love it. Any color you have will work for this. And I'm going to use my finger once again. Using my finger, I can get so much of that pigment on my eye. If I were to use a brush with this, it would kind of flake everywhere because it's a loose eyeshadow. Um, and I am going to use my ring finger because it's that, that's a very soft fingertip. And as you can see, I'm not going up too high, but I always start in the outer corner of my eye and then work it to the middle and then in. Now, as you get in, I barely, barely go all the way into the corner. Then with that same ring finger, I'll lightly go a little bit in the arch, but not too high up. And as you can see, it doesn't look blended. It looks a little bit crazy, <laughs> but that's okay. We're going to blend. So doing the same motions, the windshield wiper motions and the tiny little circles, and just keep on blending. I do not go all the way up to the brow with this because I don't want a really dark color that high up. So I just keep on blending and I'll blend right into that corner, but not going over where we highlighted. Then you can brush away, or if you're like me, you can take an eye makeup remover. I'm using L'Oreal from Walmart, and I just go under the eye. And this is why I don't have concealer on right now, because to me, if it falls down onto my foundation or concealer, it streaks no matter how much I try and brush it away. So I'm going to do the other eye for you real fast, and as you can see, I start with the outer corner, work my way in, and I just keep on going. And you can get more, you guys, on your brush or your finger, whatever you prefer to use, and keep putting it on um, because you're going to be blending. So if it looks too dark or harsh at first, the blending will soften it. And a loose bristled brush, um, one that feels fluffy, is really important when it comes to blending. You can lightly go back into those corners if you feel they need a little bit more, but just be careful not to do too much because when you get too much darkness into the corner of the eye, that's when you start getting that black eye or raccoon look that people try and avoid. As you can see, we're blended out now. Now I'm going to be taking an eyeliner. Um, with this look, you don't even necessarily need an eyeliner, but 
I'm going to be wearing fake eyelashes and anytime I wear falsies I prefer eyeliner just so they look more natural. So I'm taking a liquid felt tip liner um, and I'm not doing anything too exaggerated. I do a little bit of a winged liner but even without a wing it's still going to look great because the emphasis in this look is all on the color. Now it's brow time. I'm going to be doing my brows with an angled brush uh, with a gel brow thing. <laughs> I can't talk. You guys, I don't know what I did before I used to do my eyebrows. Like, oh, I look back on pictures and I'm like, oh, why did I know? But that's okay. As we grow, we learn more and we apply. So I love brows. I don't leave my house without doing my brows. Um, and I always start on the bottom with my brows and work out. And I usually do little tiny motions for the most part with the brush, just because our hairs are small and tiny there, and it just looks more natural. And I always do my brows before my powder because I'll take my powder and slightly go over my brows, and to me, that looks a little bit more natural. By using a little bit of powder on the brows after they're done, it just softens the look. Um, you can always use powder to soften something. And if you make a mistake, if you uh, smear your eyebrow gel up too high or your mascara below your, you know, your eyelashes, you can take a little bit of foundation and just go over it and it will cover it right up. I always do the inside part of the brow last and I always turn my brush vertically that way those, that looks more natural because that's how the hairs grow. Okay, falsies. Put glue on these. I let the glue um, get tacky for about a minute before applying. And these are from Sally Beauty. These are the Ardell brand. I love false lashes because I have no lashes. So <laughs> I can't even use an eyelash curler on my actual lashes because they're too short. So falsies are a godsend to me. And it took a lot of practice, but now I love them. Dry, baby, dry. Next, I'm going to be taking a matte black gel liner with a very fine tip point pen. Or, well, excuse me, not a pen, a brush. And the reason I'm going back over is because sometimes the glue from lashes um, looks a little bit shiny, which doesn't look natural to me. Um, and also, I like my eyeliner to be so black, 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 black. And very matte. Um, so I actually walked into Sephora and was like, give me your blackest black that is the most matte and they gave me a Bobbi Brown one and I freaking love it. Now it's concealer time. You guys, I'm not actually using a concealer. This is a highlighter. It's a brightener from MAC, but I use it as concealer because it's not as cakey to me and it doesn't sit in my fine lines. So as you can see, um, I do it after I do the majority of my eyeshadow. Um, and to me, this is a pretty much a foolproof method. Then I take my foundation brush and I just go over um, the underneath part of it and blend it into the rest of my foundation. And it looks natural. Excuse me, I had the worst cold when I was filming this. So around my nose was getting red. If you are naturally red around your nose, which a lot of women are because of our hormones, you can take some concealer or brightener and just put it right there um, on top of your foundation and it will kind of... Um, counteract that redness. These are the areas I always highlight. Next, I'm going to be doing the underneath part of the shadow. I'm going to be finishing the eyeshadow look. So get a Kleenex, fold it in half, and put it up against your bottom lid. Take that loose bristled brush and just keep going back and forth and blend. Now you don't have to use a Kleenex, um, but it's a pretty easy method because it keeps the fallout from falling down onto the concealer you just did. Um, it's gentle to your eyes. Um, it works. And then you can kind of angle it up on that outer corner because you always want everything going up on your face and never dragging downwards because that will drag your face downwards, making you appear older. Um, so this is a much more flattering way of doing it. Next, I'm taking a penciled black liner and I'm going to be Putting that liner on, um, I'm getting close to my waterline, but not too close, but I'm also not going to um, go over what I just did with the shadow because I still want that smoky look from the shadow. So I'm being careful just to do it right on the top of that bottom lid. Um, and then I take 
a Q-tip and just blend it because I like that smudged, more natural look versus a harsh line. So a Q-tip works wonderfully. Um, sometimes it makes my eyes water, but not much at all. And as I get into the inner corners of my eye, I always blend it a little bit more there so it looks more natural and fades out. And excuse me, I am totally sucking down a cough drop. So unprofessional. <laughs> then you can go back and highlight the corners of your eyes if you want. Um, next, I'm going to be doing my powder. I'm using the Ben Nye Banana Powder. And I mainly do my T-zone underneath my eye, but not going over that shadow that we just did. Um, <clears throat> normally, I would not use a powder under my eye because... Powder can sit in your fine lines or wrinkles. However, the Ben Nye powder is meant to go under the eyes also. It kind of highlights them. So that I do use it there. Next, I'm going to be using mascara. And you guys, I want to apologize because my camera quit working on me. And it didn't film where I did my bronzer. So I'm running into the lips right here. But as you can see, my cheeks are already bronzed, which I put on after my powder. Um, so with the lips, I'm using Ramel London from Walmart. And this is not a pencil liner. So it's softer, uh, goes on smoother. And as you can see, I'm kind of lining my lips a little bit thicker. Um, I've been doing that lately. I like the appearance of it. What you do is totally up to you. Um, and then I just blend it out with my finger and I put the lip liner all over my lips, you guys, because it makes it look more natural. And that way, if it rubs off, you won't get a horrible ring around the outside of your lips. Then I'm taking a natural gloss, um, natural looking, and I'm putting it in my pout. And you guys, I will list everything for you below in the description box, every product I use. And there we have it. The look is complete. So you guys, I hope you like this look. I hope you try it. I hope it goes well for you. Thank you so very much for watching. And please subscribe and let me know if you have any questions um, or comments. I'd love to read them. And I hope you guys have an amazing day.